Well, gosh, it is really nice to be out. It has been so cold over the last few days that the ground's been too hard, you couldn't get into anything. And it's bloody cold again today, but still not a breath of wind. How often have you heard me say that? Usually I'm complaining about how howling it is and what gales there are. I wouldn't even need my mic, though the camera would pick it up perfectly well. And I'm on another little bit of this, all this pasture. There's lots of little fields all together. And I'm doing them one by one. Um, there's not an, this one doesn't feel quite as special, even though I found some cracking coins. I've got to say, I've already found a William III, the, a little Victorian halfpenny. Was that a farthing? I think it's a halfpenny. I don't know what that is. I'll have to look it up. I thought it might be a button, but I can't see any sign of a shank. I don't know what that is. I found a nicer button here. That one there. And uh, George the Fifth. A few bits of lead. That I thought I think might be worked flint. Quite excited about that. When I'm finding this sort of stuff in pasture like this, where, which is very unusual to even find bits of flint being turned up by the moulds and then this sort of shape and, and sort of look like it's been napped a bit both sides. Well that to me looks like it's um that to me looks like it's been worked. And then this. Now I haven't cleaned it up yet. On closer inspection, my William the Third is not William the Third, it's William and Mary. That's the second William and Mary I found in these fields. Um, this is um, a little halfpenny. I thought it was a bit odd that the back of his head was so close to the end. And well, the reason being is they've got to get two faces in, or two, two um, portraits in. So that's a, that's a jolly nice coin, that's a bit worn. But again, I said the last time I found one, a few couple of videos ago, I, I, I think I've only ever found one before, so that's two now, like buses they're coming along. And then this, now I don't know what this is, I think it's probably very modern, a um, bit of scrap aluminium or something. Um, it just looks silvery or leady or something. Just don't know, I don't think it's very grand, anyway. And then also, this, incredibly close to the surface, um, and I really, I dismissed it immediately as being a bit of bit of tat but I think that sort of um, hatching and, and, and lettering on the side is medieval isn't it even though that doesn't look like a medieval I think it no do you know what I think it is I think it's a money clip or something like that with very old-fashioned um, writing on it that does just the copper itself doesn't look medieval but the hatching does anyway does a really nice start nothing groundbreaking yet but but haven't been here very long, so let's just keep our fingers crossed. Well, that's nice. That gave quite a nice little sound, to be fair. But look how tiny it is. And it's quite close to the surface. But that's because of the bloody moles. Or not the bloody moles. But anyway, either way, I like moles. They don't think they do much harm in somewhere like here. Um, it's a little Roman coin. You've got the tiny little four cent. I think it's the soldiers and the standard on that side. I think it's hard to see what's going on really and there's a sort of face there isn't there? Yeah. So <laughs> that's not going to win any beauty award competitions but it's a lovely find all the same. Hooray! Well I can't believe it. It's got warm enough to take my gloves off. It was touch and go this morning. Part of me thought, I I'm not going to be bothered. I thought, am I going to get it here and um, I won't even be able to get the spade in the ground. Well, I had trouble getting the spade in the ground a little bit earlier, but it's softened up. It's got lovely and warm. And I'm not going to be able to get out for a while, so this is just... Anyway, I've got my, other, my old speaker back. Let's see if this works. The other one's just so terrible. That's quite bright. almost too bright it's a little bit it feels big but it I am getting I'm getting a fairly good strong signal all the way round it takes a bit of time getting used to this There's plenty of things that sounded really arny I've dug anyway and they've been good let's have a look 
as you can see look it is a bit it is a bit but underneath it's fine it's not frozen after about an inch it's nice and soft again it's definitely slightly staccato -y, isn't it it's a bit spluttery but it's out <laughs> sounding a bit fruit sounding a bit fruity gosh i started doing tiktok recently this is really good fun but the amount of comments i get on not being able to pronounce my r's i mean i, I mean the youtube comments are generally pretty friendly god go on tiktok i mean i absolutely i get slammed by complete strangers it's very odd well i mean it is extraordinary this machine it's the tiniest button at you know it's just the copper button could have easily been a roman coin though couldn't it that easily been i mean definitely worth digging but my God, I'm wondering whether that really is what it was. Crikey. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> but look at this buckle. I mean, my God, it's an absolute beauty. Now, I don't know how old it is. The actual buckle itself looks to have some age. But it's got these little spikes on each side there and i don't know offhand what that dates to and it's fairly uniform so i'm in two minds as whether it's that sort of 1400 or 1600 i just don't know hoping it's the earlier but i'm really pleased with that it's a lovely thing well that's copper and it's probably a cartridge but it's good for copper this machine and that's quite clear and a bit sort of boring which means makes me think it's a cartridge sometimes if it's deeper it can be quite buzzy copper quite fuzzy sounding i don't think this is a coin i've got the reactivity running in the at four which is the default on sensitive FT, I usually lower it to three. It's too loud for me, four. That's what, it, it's a cartridge. Uh, but that's what it sounded like, and you can't ignore them. If you're not in the mood, you can if you're in the mood and you're finding hundreds. If you know what they are, they do ignore them. So many of you say, oh, I dig everything. Well, I think that's brilliant if you dig everything. It's a good thing to do. But if you simply can't be bothered and you're finding too many and you know it's a cartridge, well, it could easily be something else, but you might well be back on the field another day, hopefully, if you're still alive and you've got a chance to, to dig it another day. But if, it's, if, it, if they're annoying you one day, then don't dig them. I mean, if I dig three or four more of these now, sounding like that, I'll stop digging that signal. I'll just stop because I don't want to be digging these all day. I'll just keep my ears open for something a little bit different. And, and if I miss something, then big deal. I don't care. I really couldn't care. I mean, I might be back. I might not find it. Someone else might find it. It, does, it really couldn't make any difference. I just don't want to be digging these all day if I know what they sound like. Well, it's such a shame I didn't live dig this. I've just dug too many cartridges and lead and stuff, and I just thought I'd get it done not a cartridge it's a silver coin i don't know what it is yet because i haven't given it a proper look but it's very thin i think it's probably hammered i'm keeping my fingers very slightly crossed it might be saxon because i have found a couple up here i don't think it is <laughs> oh it's it's oh, so exciting let's have a look i won't rub it too much i promise you can probably hear the chirruping of the electric fences around here. Yeah, it's a hammer coin. It's a jolly nice one. I don't think it's at all clipped. I'm not going to rub it too much. There's a very obvious long cross on that side. 
I think that's chalk and not silver. Um, I can't work out what's going on on the reverse though. I can see the cross there, so surely it starts from that point. Um, I can't see a, a crown or a monarch, it just looks like a, like a, like a tower, like a castle. <laughs> Maybe I've got it the wrong way up. I'm bound to, haven't, aren't I? But that's just a little bit unusual. Um, but it's a long cross. I think it's London mint. That does date it to Edward. It's not Saxon or anything like that. But I'm brilliant. Anyway, I'm really pleased with that. Hi there, and welcome to headquarters. Well, it turns out this is really, this is really quite exciting. And... And I wasn't wrong about the towers either. Now that should have sent alarm bells off fairly quickly because it could have just been, it could have just been badly struck or, or just, or damaged. But it looked fairly obviously like towers. And I quite often say in these videos, I'm really lucky to have found several of what they call sterling imitations. Now I'm not going to bang on too long about those now. I have banged on about them before. They are fascinating coins. And as I said, I quite often, when I find a completely bonkers coin, say um, that it possibly could be sterling imitations, because the very point of them is they were intending to copy the English sterling coins of Edward I to Edward III, closely enough to be mistaken, but not too close, that they couldn't actually say, if anyone got into any trouble, well, it's a different coin. It's got a different legend on it. It's got a different king on it. But to the uninitiated and to your average Englishman at the time, you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't have blinked twice about thinking that this wasn't actually an English coin. Now, there's a very good website, and I'm just going to leave the link to that because it explains sterling imitations as it says itself in a nutshell. I had some um, dealings with the guy who did this site once um, over a coin I found a few years ago now. He's extremely friendly and he knows a lot about these coins. The long and short of it is that the English coins were a better quality coin in, in, in silver content, etc. And the point of some of these imitations is that the quality wasn't so good. So if it were, was being mistaken or was being exchanged for an English coin, you were quids in. They come mainly from the low countries, Flanders, what's now Holland, um, Brussels, places like that. They do, you do get them found also in France and Germany, and they are mainly minted by the sort of heads of the principalities there. For example, I've got a, lo a list of this guy's collection here. Um, Guy of Dampier, Flanders and the Mer, John of Aven, Haino, um, John of Brabant, this is a Brabant coin, but John III, um, a guy from, um, um, princess from Holland, Cambrai, um, Flanders, all sorts of places, but in that sort of thing, places where a lot of trade was happening between England and the continent. Now I put this on the detecting hub and the usual suspects got it immediately. It's John III, Duke of Brabant Sterling. And even better than that, Dave put me on to this, which is an article by Simon Maslin, who is a big cheese when it comes to medieval coinage. Um, and here it is here, a, a rare medieval continental sterling penny. Um, it's one of only six of its types that's been recorded. And there it is, the same as mine with the towers and all the rest of it. Now, it was minted in Brussels by John III, Duke of Brabant, which at the time was part of the Holy Roman Empire, and it dates the first half of the 14th century. Um, I won't go through all of this now. I will leave a link to, to, to this article. But that makes it not... A, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky I found a few of these imitation sterlings. They're one of my favourite things to find because they are a bit bonkers. This one is in not bad condition. You can clearly see the towers. The silver's very dark, probably be due to the, to, to the quality of it. Um, it, it. There's a long cross on the back, and I tell you exactly what it says. I can see all sorts of markings. It says Mon Eta um, something XEL, and I can tell you what that is because Simon tells us here. Um, the reverse has an English style long cross with three pellets in each angle with the legend Moneta Bruxelles. Um, what's that? Probably money from Brussels or whatever. But it's just what a cracking, cracking little coin and, and quite a rare one to boot. So I'm completely thrilled with that. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching. And we come back a couple more times. So I'll see you later. Well, that sounds a bit ballsy, to be fair. That could be iron. It's a bit cleaner there, but I've got something fabulous to show you. Anyway. 
getting cold again suddenly it's getting a bit late as well yeah i'm afraid this is quite army around here i think it's got there's a lot of um a lot of war stuff well not war stuff but they did stay around here they camped around here during the war and did exercises and stuff and i think um and it's just rifle rounds And if something's really big and squawky in this field, it really has been. But I'm about to show you something which is about the same size as the rifle round, so you've got to dig them if you're in the mood. That's sounding horrible. Ugh. <laughs> My God. Well, quite cool, isn't it? Um, it's a bit like that thing I found the other day. It's, it's very, <laughs> it's very irony. Isn't that smart? Though? I love that. Don't know what it's for. That would have gone in somewhere, I think. Pinned down somewhere. But look at this. Now, I've seen one of these before. I'm sure of it. I've no idea what it is. I don't know how old it is. If it had a hole in it, I'd say it was the end of a, um, one of those bellows. That's what it looks like. But is it, is it a pommel? And um, it's got sort of, I, mean, I don't even know how old it is. But I really like it. It's just got something about it really cool. But I just don't know. I just have no idea. But I just think I have, I've seen that before. I've just, I know I have. Um, and it's slightly flatter on that side. I absolutely love it. It's seriously cool, but God knows what it is. Um, we will, let's go back to headquarters. Unless it's something really rubbishy. Well, no, I'll come straight back again. But let's go and have a look. Welcome back. Um, the jury's still a bit out on this. I put it on the detecting hub and a couple of the usual suspects, one in particular, said very firmly, purse bar fragment. Now... I'm, I'm just not sure. It, it's quite, it does seem to be quite sort of big round there, but the rope work design and the design in general does make me think probably post-medieval. And I think that this sort of knob, this sort of ball end, um, Tass, come here. Come on, Tass, come on, up. <laughs> Tass, you're absolutely soaking. Tass is in my bad book. He found um, my kestrel feather on my desk and has been chewing it and, okay, not the most exciting thing in the world, but it was in really good condition and the colour was lovely. Um, and also, <laughs> I found that he nicked my knife. Do you remember that knife from a few things ago? I mean, this is seriously special. I found this on the floor over there, so I think he grabbed that and started taking it off to try and chew it um, and maybe got a bit of a, a, bit of a shock and left it because I can't see that, he, that there's any damage to it at all. But, um... Das, you've got to, you've got to leap. Well, do you know what? Go on. Um, I could, no, 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 down. Um, I could probably do myself a favour by clearing up some of this rubbish, quite honestly. Anyway, back to this. Um, um, a couple of other people did sort of think possibly um, a shape of sorts to a dagger um, sheath or a, or even something maybe slightly bigger. Um, I just don't know. It's got two points in it there. W would that have been to hold the actual purse bar itself? I, I mean, it's just a completely fabulous object. The rope work design and the design in general, as I said, makes me feel, I'm wondering how old it is. I'm uh, possibly not very, um, well, but I mean, certainly sort of three, 400 years, I would have thought, but maybe not much more than that. But I thought I'd seen something like it and it's in really good condition and it's just rather a wonderful object, but more than that i just don't know so if, if any of you can help with that that would be really appreciated but unusual i've never found one before and i'm really pleased with it anyway thank you very much for watching and let's go back to the fields Well, look at this. Can you imagine how cool that would have been if it were whole? Not a particularly early one, because you can tell by the lug. 
and it's very silvered but that would have been a big one big crotal bell fragment I mean that's just so cool so I mean as I said I mean probably I don't know we'd be lucky if it's 17th century probably more like 18th century um, well I don't know actually is that a drilled hole it could be drilled holes are earlier but that's just smart that's a lovely signal as well don't think that's a cartridge sounding a bit clipped too clipped to be a cartridge getting to know this machine I bet it is a cartridge now but they're just everywhere oh I don't know it could go either way it'd be a huge bit it'll be a bit of lead I can just tell it's exactly what it is so boring but my god it sounds nice doesn't it uh. Lead, 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 the curse of metal detecting. You just can't. You can't account for it. And nice things are made of lead too. Well, that's interesting. Look, it's the second one. One of these funny little buckles with the spikes. God, it's so funny, this hobby, isn't it? You don't, ever, you don't find anything. Then you find two of the same thing on the same day. But having never found them before. I don't know how old they are. I, I just don't know. I just don't know. We have to ask the hub. Well, a quick news flash update on these buckles. I actually got back home after finding these and I went to CJ's uh, buckle page which is really easy to find. You just put in buckle ID into Google and up it comes. And there's a bit of um, searching through, but not very hard. Get to part six medieval, um, go to the drawings and bingo. There it is. Type 4A, 1250 to 1400. Now with this site, you can go back to the home page and go to the text of those drawings. And there's a bit of information on it here. Examples of type four have been included here for completeness as they're obviously some sort of attachment to straps or belts, but apparently they've never found a, a tongue to it, a, a, a pin in, in any of these. I think only one. Um, and then, so they reckon they can't call it a buckle in the proper sense of the word buckle. Um, but it, but they obviously it is something. Um, it says this type is common on medieval sites and dated from the mid 13th century onwards. Well, common they may be, but I've never found, um, well, I think I, I, I possibly have found them. I mean, they're the sort of thing that you sort of, you don't throw away. I mean, I don't throw anything away because I'm a complete magpie, but it's the sort of thing that looks a bit sort of Second World war -y, a bit sort of that might have just been part of a strap slider on a sort of army belt or something. And it may just sort of get lost in your, in your buckets of stuff, which you don't think are particularly important. But I don't think they're that common. I mean, I, I, as I said, I, I've not found that many and I certainly haven't found them in this condition. On top of that, I've tried looking through the Portable Antiquity Scheme, looking with um, descriptive words used here, loop with internal points, spikes, etc. And nothing particularly obviously comes up on that. And then I put in um, search words into Google and I still can't find proper images of them apart from the drawing on this. So I did think they are that common. Well, I certainly haven't found that many of them. Anyway, that's just a quick update, quick news update on these buckles. Gosh, this machine sometimes, right, well, I'm bloody glad I didn't film this live because it would have taken forever. Look how deep it is. It was just a buzz. It was a zzz, zzz, zzz. Um, not an iron buzz, one up from iron, and there was no grunting around it, but it was a very fuzzy sound. After a few things, I, I, I couldn't hear it at all. There was nothing, no, n n nothing coming out at all. Um, I located it with a pinpointer at about 12 inches, and it's here. I don't know what it is yet. It could be lead, could be a musket ball. I don't know, but at that depth and, and, and from the signal it was giving me, it's just so satisfying. I don't really care what it is. It's the fact that I was, it, it made me dig it. 
at that depth. I mean, look. <sighs> well, it's an easy pinpointer and a bit. I suspect it's horrible, but I don't, as I said, I don't care. Oh, well, it is horrible. It's just a piece of lead. But that, that far down. Well, I mean, not a complete surprise, but the, the, what it was giving me was, um, was just, oh, well, I dug it. Well, that was deep too. Gosh, I am learning to like this machine, I've got to say. I'm reading it much better now. I've turned it down. I've, I've turned the power down. Look at the condition of that beautiful coin. It's only a Victoria halfpenny, but it doesn't matter. It was deep. I'm just, I'm just 1891. Just really, really enjoying the depth that this is giving me and, and now knowing what to dig and what not to dig. I'm really pleased with that. Look at the condition of it. Beautiful. Well, that's quite nice, I think. If you know me from these videos, you know that I'm not crazy about thimbles. But this is a silver one. <laughs> and it's rather sweet. I'm imagining it's Victorian. Um, it's got some writing on it. I don't know what it says. Um, um, I think... <laughs> something a trifle? I don't know, it's just, just a very, very pre I mean, I'm still not crazy about thimbles. So there's very early ones, the sort of, and the ones without tops, the beehivey ones, all the rest of it. I found a very nice one recently. I do quite like those. And I quite like the idea of thimbles being found in fields and why are they there, etc. But, um, but a little silver one, you, however, even though I don't think it's very old, is very welcome. Well, I think we'll end on this one. I mean, I love that more than anything. That's the best signal I've had all day. I don't know if you can hear it or not. It's so wispy, but it's wispy all the way round. I think that's a good target. With the weather we've had, that's been such a lovely day. <sighs> And the ground's fine now, it's completely softened up. But it's not sounding any clearer. Hmm, which worries me slightly. But it's there, it's about six inches deep. Slightly on the side. Sounds all right now, doesn't it? I bet it's a cartridge, even though it sounds a little bit... Oh, I'm hopeful it's not. I bet it is, but I'm hopeful it's not. It is a little Roman coin, I think. Hooray! Another one. Well, that's lovely. It's a lovely one to finish on. And just goes to show those little deep wispy tones are still the ones you want to look out for. Um, Yup, I think it's got, it looks like it's got a bit of silvering on it, but I often say that. Oh, that's a lovely one. Okay, that's cleaned up really nicely. Um, I don't know who it is. One of the House of Constantine, it's a little 4th century bronze. Might even be one of the girls. It looks very silvered. Um, but I wasn't saying it'll clean up. I, is it a Siliqua? Don't think so, but it is very silvered. Um, I'll be careful. Yes, it, I think that might be a Siliqua. Be a bit careful with that. 
Wow. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, if it is a sneak, we'll go back to HQ quickly, but otherwise we'll leave it for next time. I'm really pleased with that. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.